Hello. Helps to have my mic up. Hi. I literally just woke up and realized what time it was and was like, fuck. So my voice is not here yet. Um, it'll be here soon. I apologize ahead of time and I just hit my teeth with my mic so I don't know how that sounded on. <laughs> I just did it again. What the fuck? I am still asleep. Voice is still in the mail. Yeah, voice is still in the mail. Energy is still in the mail. I am tired. I am exhausted. I look like a mess. But what's now? <laughs> As we have established last stream, this is a regular thing. Don't expect me to be put together. <laughs> I should probably turn on my lights. That requires getting up, though. Fuck down so y'all can hear me. Jeez. What is wrong with me today? But yeah, though, I literally, I woke up, I decided, I was like, hey, I wonder if Throne has put anything else on their website. So I was going through Throne, and then I looked at my phone, and it was 11, and I'm like, fuck, I'm not even out of bed yet. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, no voice, and still waking up. Please bear with me. Hello, Skylar. How we doing? I I I am a hot mess today. But again, what is new? There's there, there, that's a regular occurrence here. I just y'all get sexy gravelly voice for a little bit. <laughs> I don't think it's that sexy. I threw my mini cup my balls a few times. He saw it to me more than a few times, so you can't tell me off. I remember my very first job, we had weekly meetings on Mondays. And I, I slept in a little bit. And I was like, okay, if I sleep in a little bit, I'll just have enough time to wake up. I wake up, and the meeting was over. So I call my boss. I'm like, I am so sorry. Is there any way I can still make it down? And he's like, no. And it was one of those days where I would have to go all the way down to work for the meeting and then come home. So there was no point. But it was required. So there was no point. So it wasn't that big of a deal that I missed a meeting. It did come up in my review, though. The fuck? <laughs> and I laughed and I went, we both know that I slept in that day on accident. He goes, yeah, I know. I just, I have to put it in here. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You have to put the fact in that I missed one meeting because I slept in on a day that I wasn't even supposed to be working, but I still need to be at the, uh, work places, bosses, please stop requiring your employees to come to meetings on days that they have off. That is their time, not yours. <laughs> And I, so happy I no longer have that job. I love everyone who I worked with at that job, but fuck, that was a strict ass job. Let me look a little bit more presentable. As well as I can see right now. Exchange the other day, what? Still unsure why. Bucked up my lip open when I fell or being yelled at all. Yeah, you, I mean. Well, I hope you are getting taken care of yourself. Good, you got some snacks. Hey, Rish. I'm the only person in my position, so all my meetings are pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so, play. So, plan. We're gonna finish. Finish. Not for broadcast once I'm awake. Need to figure out food, maybe. I don't know. 
I can go without eating, it's fine. <laughs> Don't. Know what you're gonna do, Rish. Don't you do it. Don't. Um. Damn it, I knew you were gonna do that. Damn it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. No, stop it. Rish, I told you not to. Oh yeah, it's a good, that is definitely a good thing because I would have not had the energy by the time we were done. <laughs> You're not my mom. Um, yeah, it's a good thing we, we ended last night because I, I, as soon as I had put my mindset in, I'm done for the day, I was exhausted. I could not keep my eyes open any longer. Oh, it's very rare. Oh, did I stream for five hours and don't notice that I've been streaming for five hours? Oh, there's nothing I can do about it. I have no food in the house right now. I mean, I have some food, but that requires like cooking and I don't want to cook. Be fine, don't worry, I'm fine. I have a bowl of grated cheese, that is glorious. Motherly Rish. I already have one. Helicopter parent, I don't need to. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mom, if you see this, you're not a helicopter parent. She's not gonna see this, but Danny could be watching and Mom could accidentally hear it. Oh <sighs> It's slightly protective, overprotective parent. I will still never forget the fact that my best friend in high school was gay. And I was not allowed to sleep over at his house despite the fact that he was gay. Like, he's gay, nothing's gonna fucking happen, jeez. <laughs> uh, I always feel like people don't, please stop caring about me. Like, I, I don't like it when people like, Maya, eat. Maya, have you eaten today? Maya, have you drinking water today? Maya, are you okay? What's going on? I'm like, I don't stop it. 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 List up. List up. It's not you. It's 100% me. Like, I just don't. I feel awkward when people do it. I'm like, you shouldn't care as much about me as you do. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to feel worried or, or worry or care. <laughs> as you can see, I'm still sleepy. So I'm rambling, but hopefully I got my point across of where my brain goes. I get it. Trust me, I do. But you have to that's the whole point. I don't have no I have no control over it, so it makes me uncomfortable. No, stop it, please. Uh. And that's why I did that like treat stream thing too. I do not consent to being cared for. Fuck you. <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. I do not consent to being cared for. Fuck y'all. I just realized the amount of cake. Chad, I'm out of cake. Oh god, I genuinely started to tear up on accident. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, why did I do that? I'm out of cake. I don't have any cake. Someone want to send me cake? And or Taco Bell. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. 
I don't know why I felt like I need to clarify that, because I know all of you wouldn't know it was a joke, but I feel like I still need to say that was a joke. Murderous food? How is Taco Bell murderous? It is- Okay, fine. Chase, you want to send me non-poison? <laughs> Next stream I ended up after yours last night was a cake baking stream before it ended. Why is everything about cake now? I want cake. Fuck y'all. Taco Bell's good. I like Taco Bell. Mm. What the, what I do? Fucking, fucking hair. This is what I get for cutting my hair into a bob. It's not long enough in the back to be put into a bun. Y'all y'all are y'all are just mean. Judging what I like to eat. How dare you? How dare you? Sometimes you really want I agree, it's not the best food in the world, but sometimes you just want a really shitty bunch of burritos and tacos. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Fish, don't judge me. Rish, you bitch, don't judge me. <laughs> sometimes I judge in text. <laughs> I get it, sometimes you- Exactly, exactly. Sometimes you just- You hate yourself enough that you just need some food poisoning. <laughs> that was darker than I was expecting. Uh. Okay, I'm turning the lights on. Okay, not Taco Bell. How about Panda Express? How about Panda Express? See, Panda Express is better. Panda Express is better. Yeah, fairy hoodie. For those who don't know, I'm in Seattle. And this is the fairies that we have here in Seattle. Oh, fucking hate Chase. Fuck Chase. Why must you hate on everything good in this world? Why? I, I literally worship their orange chicken. And I will fight anyone who says it's shit. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> Oh my god, seriously? Already? Damn, your fairies are shit. <laughs> no offense. Yeah. These are these are the Washington State fairies. They're um Okay, cool. Yeah. Um if you've never been up to Seattle, or to the Puget Sound in general, um, there's a fair amount, uh, because of the Puget Sound is such a long estuary? The sound is very long, so it's hard to go from the top of the ferry, if you want to get across, go all the way down and back up. It's possible, plus there are also some islands, um, so the ferries are great. The fairies are great, um, and if you come to Seattle, um, I highly recommend going on one to Bainbridge. It's fun. Yes, but is it like that really like caramelized, sticky kind of like orange chicken?
<sighs> yeah. Here, there's such a tourist thing that they usually pay for themselves really quickly. Especially because a lot of people from the islands, um, from, from Bainbridge and Woodby, um, work in Seattle. So, they need that crossing constantly, so they, they end up paying for themselves pretty well. It's, it's, it, it's very tourist driven, but it's also very local driven as well. Um, here they're almost required for some daily life. Oh god, that's the worst. Ooh, a two hour queue? Jesus, the only time there's ever a two hour queue for our fairies is if there is a storm happening and you have to wait for the storm to pass. I literally had one moment when I was a kid where I think, I can't remember if I was coming over from Bainbridge or Woodby. I can't remember where I was coming from, um, but we ended up not being able to take the last ferry because of a storm, and so we had to drive all the way down and all the way back up. But we were waiting like two, three hours before we just before they were like, "Yeah, nope, we're not, we're calling it for the day." Yes. Your fairy system is shit. Fuck, that's awful. <laughs> that, that, is, that is awful. <sighs> Reasonable. Reasonable. I need to wake up. I need to wake up. I don't drink coffee, but this is one of those moments where I wish I did. Alright, alright. How about Wendy's? Chase, what's your opinion on Wendy's? Ready now. Why did I do that? I'm sorry. I'm I'm so delirious. <laughs> Brain not function properly. All right, Chase. What's your go-to for delivery then? Kidding me? <sighs> They're not heavy enough. <sighs> uh. 
and they're running into swells. Are you fucking kidding me? That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I saw the photo. I don't think we have tubs out here. Yeah, that, that photo's insane. Jeez. That, that literally was like half in the air. <laughs> See, what you do when the waves are that bad is you don't go out in the water. You wait, or you cancel for the day. That was a normal weather? Jesus. Then maybe don't use lightweight boats. Learn to do the right thing. I know nothing about marine shit, so this is coming out of my ass. But like, there's a tubs in Seattle that's coming right then. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. Oh my god, I already have like. Do I have bobby pins? Where are my bobby pins? I have bobby pins. Somewhere. I have the bobby pins. Where's the bobby pins? We'll just... Nope. We'll just do this for the rest of the stream, right? Just... I don't need both hands, right? Uh... Who is Tubbs? I'll have to try it out sometime. Sorry, I just saw a tweet that was, I'm doing a project on elderly magic players. If you're a magic player and over 18, please DM me. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's good. Fuck, that's good. James Sue, James Sue, tweeted that. Uh, Coleman liked it. That's how I found it. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting up there. What is my chin itch? No, I'm not. I'm not baby. I know baby. I am not baby. How dare you, Chase? How dare you? I am not baby. <laughs> hey, cryptic. I am not baby. Stop it. I am not baby. Thanks, cryptic. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> I have not toddler either. Jeez. I'm sorry if your fairies are doing that. This, okay, this is my opinion. I am not an expert. But if your fairies are doing that, maybe you need either bigger, heavier boats or go around the rough spot. Yeah, it'll cost more money, but your people will be safer and more people will be willing to ride your fucking fairy. Sleepy Maya has spoken. God fucking... Give me one second. Because I literally just woke up, Chase. Hence the conversation about food, because I haven't eaten yet. But I found cookies. Sprinkles. Can I check my DMs? Yeah. <gasps> that looks so good. That looks so good, Cryptic. I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited for Monday. I'm so excited for Monday. Oh, I'm sorry your date got sick. Shitty icing. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. I I am currently kind of in isolation. I I still go. I'm still going to work mainly because. Work is where the uh, someone at work caught it. Um, but um, yeah, life happens. 
I've had to cancel a few things because of it. I'm like, I would rather be safe and just, and limit my, my, I'm testing negative right now, but, um, I would rather be safe and not risk anyone around me potentially scanning it because it could be false negatives. Where'd my sprinkle go? There's my sprinkle. Welcome to my stream. I'm making cookies. I'm decorating cookies. These are left over from... Yeah, Maren, I think you told me about that. That you're also in isolation. Very difficult to put sprinkles on icing that is semi-solidified and that you can't like just place the sprinkles you have to like push them in oh I could do this I could do this this is gonna be a mess hey Sersha hello I am I am I am I am making uh, my phone thought I was talking to Siri when I said hey Sersha We're gonna do this. And then, take the cookie, we flip it over, press her in. Fuck yeah, it worked. <laughs> ah. Every time I think of false negatives my and positives, my brain goes to Bayesian statistics? Someone gave you more wolf emotes. I love it. I love it. Oh no, Marion, you're out of cheese. I have some shredded Colby Jack in my fridge. Do you want it? <laughs> Fair point, and I'm not paying for DHL, so it would probably be bad by the time it got to you. This icing does not like to stick to the cookie. I wonder if I've let it sit too long. That's what's going on. Makes sense. DHL is supposed to be the most reliable way of sending things internationally. Um, but even then, it'll cause delays and shit. It's also the most expensive. Hmm. 
There are sprinkles all over my desk. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Gotta love it when you prepare to pay for something and someone's like, nope, I got it. Yeah, I've also noticed that FedEx can be better. I hope you find them. Or someone owns up to it. Oh, look at the bunny! I, I can't believe that like the beginning of my stream has just become like a mukbang. I'm not doing it on purpose. I don't plan on making it a permanent thing. I just prioritize streaming over taking care of myself. And also, I'm not really taking care of myself right now. I'm eating cookies. But it's fun! You get to decorate the little bunny. I am a child at heart. No one judge me. The problem with it, you can leave. This is all I have right now, okay? Don't judge me. And I am too lazy to go up and cook something. in the house base is basically sleeping and taking care of the little so there's no judgment for me. Thank you, Sersh. I appreciate it. I would. You can be an adult and still be a child at heart. Don't you knock my Taco Bell! Taco Bell is great. It's for when you want really, really, really shitty not Mexican food. Sometimes you really just want those shitty tacos and burritos and there's nothing wrong with that. Understandable, Sersha. Well, 
When we're playing Wonderlands with Plan, should I um, ask him his opinion on Taco Bell? Exactly, 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 Sersha. You got me, you got me. Mm. In my opinion, you judge Taco Bell, you judge me. Stand down. I'm too tired to be dumb today. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, I'm too tired. Too tired. Don't have the energy. Or does it really change depending on where you are? makes sense i know i know food companies can be different depending on what country you're in but i didn't know region was a thing here in america our fast food restaurants do not take care of us however fast food restaurants everywhere else in the world have phenomenal food and i want to eat all of it Especially in Southeast Asia. <laughs> have you seen, have you seen all of the food, fast food restaurants in Southeast Asia? Oh my god. Japan and Korea specifically. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bulgogi burger in Korea at McDonald's and I want it. I want it. I want it. Amakas had a waiter? McDonald's had waiters? What? Also, I love the fact that it's Makas. It's called Makas. I fucking love that shit. We don't even have table service here. It's an empty room full of tables. You go up to the counter, you buy your food, and then if you would like to sit down, you have to go find a table yourself. I love that it's called Macca's over there. It's just Mickey D's or McDonald's over here. Oh, now I want McDonald's. Damn it. I really need to stop talking about food on stream. I really need, I have this weird thing of anytime I start talking about food, I get thinking about it. And then I'm like, fuck, I want it. I want food, I want it, I want, I want their French fries. Hungry Jacks? Oh my god. Fuck, I, I love that. I love that. Hungry Jacks is such a better name for Burger King. Like, Burger King. Basic. Hungry Jacks. Perfect. I mean, we have Jack in the box, so that may, might be confusing. I don't know if y'all have Jack in the box. Jack in the Box is that fast food restaurant that couldn't decide on what track it wanted to go down, so it went down every single track available. Yeah, New yeah, I know there's that really big one in New York City that does table service. Here in Seattle, none of them do. In fact, one McDonald's location is actually known for being a um, drug hotspot. <laughs> ah, it's quite funny.
Yeah, yeah, buy your food and go away. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is here. Uh, except for one in Ballard, which has a play place. I think, I don't know if it still, I think it still has the play place. I don't remember. But it had a play place for a really long time. Play places are slowly getting taken out of McDonald's here. I don't, I, I, it, it sucks. It sucks. Cause I fucking loved my, the play place at McDonald's for a while. Um, however, REI, which is a outdoor sports equipment store, it's, it's literally called, um, Recreational Equipment Incorporated, REI. Um, they have a huge one. It's not a, like, McDonald's branded play place, but they have a big, like, play area in their, in their, um, store, because they have this big building. It's like a big department store full of, like, camping supplies. It's great. It's great. If you ever come to Seattle, go to REI. Um, but, um, there's a huge one. It's great. How many times can I say great? <sighs> I actually wanna... I, I miss... I miss... I miss being old enough and small enough to play in a play place. Anyone else miss that? I feel like... Yeah, we need adult-sized play places. I feel like any of Meow Wolf's museums ha are play places. Like, um, Omega Mart. I fucking want to go to Omega Mart so badly. It looks so fucking dope. I, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. Anyone want to take me to Las Vegas? Just so we can go to Omega Mart. Please. Please. I beg of you. My HJs? What's an HJ? And Rich, no I'm not paying, that's why I want someone else to take me. <laughs> now I feel ripped off, our REI doesn't have a play place. Uh. Am I missing some? Oh! 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 Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it, Marin. It's cool. I got it. I got it. <laughs> How long did that take me to get? How long did that take me to get? Uh... I'm gonna- I'm gonna show myself out now. I'm sorry. I mean, my mind usually is in the gutter, like, 24-7. So, like, I don't understand why I didn't get it.
And on that note, I think I'm gonna jump into the game. <laughs> This was an official ad- oh my. Oh my. Okay. How can you not see it with the giant C? And teeth. <sighs> Clearly not enough, Rish. Clearly not enough, people. Clearly not enough. And on that note, we're gonna hop into the game. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't understand how they didn't fucking get that. Like, I get that word is like... It's popular on hoodies and beanies. What are stubbies? What are stubbies? Please explain to me what a stubby is. Oh, cozies. Got it, got it, got it, got it. We call them cozies. No, it's not a big- it shouldn't- I don't believe it's a big deal. But if it's a tourism thing, it's- it's definitely a big deal everywhere else. And up it's come. Once again, you find yourself sitting in Bozeman's office. Everything is pristine and orderly. Just how the facetious man likes it. That fastitious, fastitious man. Um, though it's rare for him to be late. The door opens behind you just as you start to imagine the reasons why. Ah, uh, Alex, thanks you for waiting. It's almost been six years since you started working with us, Alex. A lot has happened in that time. Unfortunately, from the incident with Mr. Donaldson, to the disrupt attack on this very building, he pauses to look at you. You meet his gaze. And the work you've done in that time has been exceptional. Not to mention your dedication and enthusiasm around the office. So, I have- I am delighted to inform you that you've been approved for a promotion. As of today, you will be- you will now be a senior broadcast engineer. Bozeman is beaming at you. I- uh, thank you. In addition to, of course, in addition to a pay rise, the role comes with additional responsibilities. You will have to work longer hours going forward. But you will now be the primary engineer for weeknights. And in time, we may even put you in charge of engineering more shows for Channel One. We've got a bright future ahead of you, Alex. Congratulations. He, pro he proffers a hand to shake and you take it. Oh, recap of what you missed after you left. I don't remember what when you left. What was the last thing you saw?
You found oranges? Ooh. Now, get back to work. Said with a smile. I'm pretty sure he's joking. But it is Bozeman after all. So you thank him again and head to your studio. You might be able to start working on other shows. What could the future hold? A foregone conclusion. It's late. It's been snowing all day, and unlike anybody else, everybody else, you stayed inside just as much as possible keeping warm. This doesn't look like my place. You normally enjoy the snow, but today it's been nothing more than an irritant. Still, tomorrow you got the day off and might, be able, might actually be able to enjoy it. Sam always gets excited when they see the snow. When they were younger, oh yeah, we sold our place. I forgot about that, right? We had to sell the house. It's like, this isn't our place. Oh, yeah, we had to sell the house. Sam always gets excited when they see the snow. When they were younger, they'd always wrap the, kid, uh, uh, wrap the kids up and take them out to play in it. It's been a while since that's happened though. The new place doesn't quite, it doesn't feel quite as cozy, especially as you can't afford to put the heating on. Sam bustles in from the cold, carrying some groceries. I could use a hand, please. Lots of stairs from here to the car. Their arms are full, and they're clearly struggling to get everything to the kitchen. But then, you've been at work all day, and they've spent most of it at home as usual. No, of course. Oh, sorry, of course. I'll be right there. As you rush to help them with their bags, Sam shoots you a grateful smile. I got most of it. There's just a couple more left downstairs. You head out, getting most of the way to the lift before you remember it's out of order. Oh my god, those names. Those names. When you grab the bags, you realize Sam's picked up everything to make fajitas, your favorite. Clearly it's not all bad. You forget the weather and the unpaid bills as you cook in your delightfully tiny kitchen, laughing together like you used to. For the first time since moving in, you think, as Sam flicks sour cream across the table at you, you're making happy memories again. Money isn't everything. Time for reflection. It's been over 13 years since your dad died. You visited his grave a few times since, normally during times of stress, when you're trying to figure out something, or when you just want some peace and quiet. Today is no different. You feel Sam's hand on your shoulder, giving you a reassuring squeeze. You're grateful that they're still here with you. Just having them by your side always seemed to make things easier. The caw of a raven catches your attention as it flies away. Charlie was only eight when his grandfather died. He didn't really appreciate how big the loss was at the time, but as he got older, you did your best to pass on what your dad taught you. But now he's all grown up. He's actually starting to teach you, which is strange, but in the nicest way. You're proud of the man he's now become. Susie. Poor Susie. What you couldn't get what you wouldn't give to have her back. Even just to argue with you. She just wanted to explore the world. So curious, so full of life, until liberation night. Everything changed then. So many lives destroyed. Your relationship with Chris has always been up a bit up and down. But of late you actually seem to be getting along. It makes a nice change, and has certainly made life easier with Sam. But that's family. You gotta take the good with the bad. She may be in an albeit expensive care home now, but it's still comforting to know your mother is around. Even if she barely recognizes you anymore, her presence is always reassuring. You could do with that now. 
You turn away and wander in the direction of the car. You can't control life, what happens, who lives, who dies. He tells your story. Uh, all, <laughs> all you can do is keep going and see what gets thrown at you next. What is life if not a series of little decisions that define us? And we'll never know which ones would take us one way and which would bring us here. The finale. Seven years since the election. Alex, good evening. That time again. Best not to focus on the problems and all that. Let's just get started. But uh, just so you know, the problems with your equipment continue unabated. Locked buttons, screens flickering on and off, sparks and the like. I'm sure you'll manage without issue. Oh, and don't forget, you've got free reign of the SFX buttons now. Make sure to use them to keep the show lively. Little F's, little chat? What have you got me? No, come on, seriously. It's not even a cake. I'm sorry, no. Okay. No worries. How old are you then, Cole? Okay, here we go. Big smiles. I've actually gained a year. I celebrated 44 last year. It's actually this I'm working year. on it. We're almost there. 44. I'm going in five, four, three. Good evening and welcome Spice to Spice it up with some audience responses, Alex. I'm Megan and I'm joined as always by the inimitable Robin and Patrick. How are we? Well, we have got so much going on tonight. I'm excited. I'd say I'm about a 12, Megan, on the excitement scale. Yeah, exactly. We have got so much SoCo stuff coming up. We sure do. We have celebrity chef Jordan Brankley who will be cooking up a store. We'll be announcing the winners of our big competition, Visions of the Future. And we'll be joined by a very special guest for a game of Wheel of Truth. And I'll even be showing you how to make your own Leader's Day gift. We've got all of that and so much more tonight on The Nightly Show. Scientists and poets, we are all these types because we are you. We will look for the truth and unlike this channel, we will show it to you. You will hear some frightening things about this government. They are chilling and they are true. We have the evidence. Understand Barbara. There is something Lord Cheeks. Right, let's have some applause on the way into the next section. By Chef Jordan Rankley. But first, we know you love them, so Robin's going to give us an update on our lovely nightly show pets in Pet Corner. Fine, suit yourself. Well, Megan, first up, we have our hamster, Lord Cheeks. Now, he's a squat winter grey with the scientific name Adipem Stoltus, and he lives here with us in this cage. Hamsters love hoarding, and they actually have special pouches in their cheeks for storing food. He loves carrots, apples, and chewing tobacco. Now, hamsters are nocturnal, so we'll do our best not to wake him up. But let's just see if we can. <laughs> well, the door has been left open. Um, so, um, it looks as though Lord Chinks has actually gone for a little wander. Uh, but I'm sure he will be around here somewhere. <laughs> In the meantime, let's say hello to our tortoise. Now, after last month's viewer vote, she is now, of course, called Slow Barbara. And don't panic, even though it is December, Rab's here doesn't actually hibernate. Let's say hello. Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, Babs. Well. <laughs> Babs is dead. Babs is definitely dead. Uh, uh, those are our nightly show pets, Megan, both alive and well. Back to you. Thanks, Robin. We'll 
check in on them or some very similar animals next time tomorrow. <laughs> now then, I hope you're hungry, because if not, you're about to be. Patrick Bannon is with Chef Jordan Rankley, and they're going to be showing us how to knock up a delicious apple pie. Mm -mm. It's time to go into the kitchen. That's right, and I'm joined here by Chef Jordan Rankley. Welcome to the Nightly Show Kitchen. I'm doing terribly. How's the kitchens you're used to? I love the colours. It's vibrant. It's fresh. <laughs> I've about all the arseholes. Yes? Sorry? What? <laughs> so, uh, you own six restaurants. You've been awarded nine Ballon Massifs across your career, and you've worked alongside the best chefs in the world. Tonight, you've got me. Oh, are you worried? <laughs> Am I fucking worried? Are you worried? <laughs> are you fucking worried? Yes. Uh. So, uh, what are we making today, chef? So, we've got a family over for Leaders Day. They're hungry. We're going to make them a delicious apple pie. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> it's got sweetness. It's got the acidity of the fruit. And then you get the richness of that pastry. Incredible. Wow, OK. So, where do we start? So, we're going to start by making our filling. So we've got about a kilogram of fresh cooking apples here. Mm. Fucking beautiful. Yep. And we're going to slice these up perfectly. Yep. And we're going to slice these up perfectly. And then straight into the pan. Uh, so, uh, your new show, uh, Demon Kitchen Heart Eater, starts on Friday here on Channel One. So, tell us about that. <laughs> so, teams of young chefs come into my kitchen, and one by one I destroy them emotionally. <laughs> and if there's time, I teach them some basic knife skills. <laughs> Fuck me, Patrick. What are you doing? What? <laughs> Shoes. Is that how you cut? Fuck, you'll lose a fucking finger. Ooh. Don't worry, I've got spares. <laughs> right, so uh, once we've done that, we uh, set these aside whilst we make the pastry. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Boom. Yeah? OK. Sugar. Butter. We mix that together and then a whole egg. You put the what shell are you in? Doing, you fucking donkey. Put your planes the size of that fucking egg. Oh, no, chef. No. Shit. Right. Mix that with a wooden spoon and work in that flour, okay? Work that into a nice ball of dough, just like that. So, uh, what does the notoriously fierce Jordan Rankley do to unwind? <laughs> Shit. In bed. Yeah. What's that? What is that? Well, it's. Bit, bit lumpy. Lumpy? It can fucking pass for a sack of sparks. Touch that. Touch it. Yeah? Pathetic. That goes into chill. Now, we're mixing our filling. Okay. Apples, sugar, cinnamon. Jordan Ranky. Oh, so, uh, well, you own six restaurants across five territories. Yeah, it's clear who it's supposed to be. Are mixing that or fucking it? What? Are you going to light a candle? Take it out to dinner? Fucking mix it for fuck's sake. Right, now we're rolling out two thirds of our pastry. A bit of flour into the dish. Uh, and uh, the filling goes next, right? Absolutely right. Oh, lovely. Okay. Then we're taking the remaining pastry. Rolling that into a round, and that goes on the top. Beautiful. Mm. Lovely. Okay. Right. Wash a bit of water around the rim. Beautiful. Now press gently all the way around, and we're cutting five slashes very carefully with steam, and then brushing the whole thing with a beaten egg. Lovely. Okay. Egg. <laughs> Oh my god. You, you, come here. Come here, you. That's a disgrace. I'd rather jam my eye with up my fucking arse than look at that. I'd rather use my tongue to tie my shoes off for fucking shit kicking contest. Do you understand? Then it goes in the oven for 45 minutes. Oh, put your fucking head in the oven while you're at it. Useless. You, come here, you. You're the worst fucking thing to happen to food since cyanide. Do you know that? I tell you what. Fuck off. Oh. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck off. Yes, okay, well, while I do that, 
let's go now to Megan and Robin, who will be announcing the winners of our competition, Visions of the Future. With us effects, less is more, Alex. Well, that looks delicious. <laughs> if you want to follow along at home, then make sure you write in with a stamped address envelope and we'll send you the fact sheet. So, Robin, look at all these amazing entries to the Vision of the Future competition. Yes, we challenged you to show us your predictions of the future and we were just inundated with entries, weren't we, Megan? From wacky inventions to global problem solving, they are all amazing and we had the best time looking through each one. So tough narrowing it all down. So we have some amazing runners up. In third place, drum roll, please. <laughs> we have Hamish, who's three from Langwelly. <laughs> he calls this still life and the future of God, and it really blew us away. Just look at the line work here, and I can really feel every passionate stroke of the brush. Mm. If you look here, you'll see a beautifully rendered what I thought at first was a smiley face or perhaps a cat, but I think if you really look, you'll see it's actually a representation of the sin and futility of death through the eyes of the living. Indeed. He's also chosen to just leave a lot of it blank, mm. which I think is really interesting. If you know Hamish and his work, of course, he, he loves focusing on the negative space, Reminder, this is from a three-year-old. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. And such talent from one so young, Megan. But next up, we have our second place entry. So in second, drum roll, please. We have Keith. Whoa. This one from Dunglees. Yeah, Keith, we were sort of aiming this towards our younger viewers, but still, he has sent in his idea of the future, which he's calling Ravaged Earth. Indeed. He says, and he's really rather detailed, notes um deprived of basic resources society will resort to a brutal system of weekly battles to the death where only the victor may breathe <laughs> he also says at the bottom here either that or about the same but maybe a bit worse i really love his attention to detail you can see the sort of gladiatorial arena and then what i can only assume is keith himself pulling off this chap's head and shouting him Come back to me, Linda! Oh, Keith. Maybe if you spent more time outdoors and less time entering children's competitions, she might not have left. <laughs> Special one there. And finally, of course, it's time to reveal our winner. All our runners-up will receive a day out at an inflatable happy land on an industrial estate just off the A40. Sorry about that, Keith. But our lucky winner will win the chance to spend the day at the Department of Change to see how our teammates are actually making the new future a reality. And the winner is, oh, drum roll, please. <laughs> it's... Oh, oh, I'm lucky with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm lucky with that. I didn't like him much. I thought his Man of the People act was just that, an act. But in the six years since he's been gone, I started to wonder if he was the only thing keeping the brakes on the team. And I'm wondering if Julia Salisbury realises that when she reflects on his passing. And worse... <laughs> But she knew all along, because then, of course, it's not reflection, it's motive. Things have gone a bit haywire, <laughs> in what I can only assume is an ominous sign of things to come. Lovely, Lola. Well, if our winners have inspired you to make some artwork of your own, do keep sending them in, and yours could be displayed in our gallery. Yeah. Well done again to everyone who took part. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, we'll be playing the Wheel of Truth and making some lovely homemade gifts. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Right. From what I can tell, the vision mix is getting even worse for wear, Alex. Yep. I expect things will be more challenging in this next segment, so be careful. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Not like what we're putting out actually manners anymore. Fair. That's not far from me. I'm, I'm on the bus. Not tonight. I'll get cards arranged for you both. Find me when you're done and I'll take you out through the um, loading bay. They think they can infiltrate us, that they can drive apart our bonds of family, friendship, and community. Alrighty. Looks like we're heading down to the final little hair little wire here. Sowing division, undermining our lives and threatening our achievements. They use freedom of speech. How much just like stock footage? Don't take any ricks, Alex, I swear to God. To justify their need to there is no God, only Alex. There is no God, only Alex. In a disrupt world, they would decide what women do with their bodies. They would 
decide what kinds of relationships are natural. They would exploit the vulnerable for personal gain. I swear on me, Mom. <laughs> there is no God, only Alex. They see themselves in their narrow view of life as the default. It's playing havoc with the sound. It's bad out there. We're being stretched again. I have to use a high pass filter. It's a revolution, Colin. Well, can you ask him to keep it down a bit? Jenny, Jenny, where's Glyn? Can we get him out here? I'm not sure about this grandma one. Oh, he's right in the garage, I guess, at the moment. But I just wouldn't say grandma. Grandmother? Yes. Grandmother's arsehole. That's much better. Oh, uh, okay, everyone, if I could have your attention, please. Sarah just needs a word. Apparently, there's been some sort of disturbance in the studio. Now, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but I wanted to let you know that I've asked for extra security, and they're already on their way. Ten seconds to positions and pose. Okay, this time you've said it. Last thing, and we're going in five, four, three. <laughs> Don't forget the SFX buttons. I'm sorry, we were just saying we can't wait to taste Patrick's pie. Oh, I don't know, I think I could wait. Well, here it is, fresh out the oven. Oh, oh. well, it does look amazing. Jordan, how's that Patrick do? Well, let's just say that pie's got more crust than my grandmother's arsehole. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Well, come on, try it, dig in. Okay, <laughs> choice. We had journalists we could trust, so we made decisions for the common good. Then we took it for granted. And now, now we have bread and circuses. So eat your sandwiches and enjoy your clowns while you can. No! Oh! No! Honestly, raise my taxes. We're clearly not paying you enough. Come to my dressing room after the show. We'll sort you out. <laughs> Patrick, is all this talk of bras embarrassing you? Sorry, I'm not blushing. Come on then, you, Julia, spin the bloody wheel. Okay, here we go. It's just that face. 
to show you a picture and you simply have to get yes. that face. Yes. Okay, you're ready. Here we go. Julia. Oh, who's that? Oh, oh my oh. God. <laughs> I think it's sweet. I missed that one. Well, it is as popular now as it's ever been. Oh, well, don't get too ahead of yourself there. Oh. Jordan, oh. who? Oh. Is this does not look familiar at all? Oh, wow. Well, I'm just getting fashion advice from someone who managed to make seven look like 85. Oh. Just what the doctor wrote. I look like I'm haunting the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 we've got to move on. Jordan, let's have another spin. question and all you have to do is answer it honestly or else you'll have to drink the smoothie oh, okay. Oh, okay okay are you ready for the question yes, yes. here we go yeah. which of your esteemed hosts is the more talented one hat on because today we're going to be making something very close to my heart it's our little studio look at that isn't it adorable oh, all of us there on the sofa wow oh it's gorgeous oh is that all you in there yeah it is if we can just get a little zoom in there we are oh i don't know about you julia but i always leave my holiday shopping to the last minute oh every year i do it every year well luckily these make amazing gifts shall we get cracking oh well not much left in the bottle Maybe not two. box here. And Julia, that's it. Grab those scissors. I just want you to get rid of this front panel here. Perfect. <laughs> Will do. Are you big celebrators in your house, Julia? Oh, yes. No, in my house, we show our love through food, like big dinners, loads of drinks. Right. <laughs> hey, food. Cryptic. Thank well. you so Absolutely much for the rain. Right along the line there. Do be careful with the scissors at home. Make sure you're being supervised. It's a bit if tough. You are a child. <laughs> there we go. Fabulous. There we go. Okay, so it's going to look a little something like this, and I've got one here I made earlier. We painted it with a bit of poster paint 
white to match our lovely curtains here in the studio, but you can obviously have whichever backdrop you like. Like a nice shiny gold number. Well, exactly right. So we're going to make bits of our set now to put in the studio, perhaps a little desk. So I'm just going to grab this piece of card. I've just got it from a little cereal box packet. I think you... I'll give you this one, Julia. Oh, thank I? you so you much. And all you need to do is cut along the Lovely. lines there. Fabulous. So what's the best part of any Leaders' Day dinner, do you reckon? Oh, uh, I don't even have to think about it. Really? I love the three potato pie. Three potato pie? I don't know that one. You know, with the chips covered in the mash or wrapped up in a jacket potato. That just means it does that. <laughs> I don't know, but that sounds starchy. <laughs> well done, Julia. So now she's folding over a little bit there. What it's going to look like at the end is this little rectangular shape there. And we're going to pop it in the middle, a bit of sticky tape on the back there so it sticks down. Now we need a sofa. That's what we need next. We're going to make that out of a lovely paper cup. <laughs> Pop knocking one down there. <laughs> knocking it all over. <laughs> I've got one though, Megan. Good. Along the line here, down the middle. Exactly right. Then when you've done that, around the bottom and again around the top. Well done. When you're done, oh, there we go. It's going to look a little something like this. And look what I've done there. I've stuck some felt down. Nice and comfortable sofas. <laughs> yes, can't have our tiny Megan having an uncomfortable sofa. Can well, honestly, you? the three potato pie doesn't sound that bad, genuinely. Getting someone tiny Crisps fired. in mash in a jacket? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, there's only one thing missing, isn't there, Julia? What is that? A higher caliber of guests. Nearly, it's people. <laughs> so all we've done to make our little people is we've stuck a cocktail stick into a bottle cap and mm, we just need a face for that now ah, i've got a good one here i know it well <laughs> it's me i'm gonna stick it down there a little bit of sticky tape all oh, my felt's going everywhere there we go oh i'm a bit lonely let's take robin and patrick over sitting down on the couch over there there you go when well well i'll make myself just comfortable just just there <laughs> <laughs> and these, of Lovely. course, are all made and cut out of our favourite newspapers or magazines. You can have any guests you like. Julia, is there anyone else you'd like oh. in a studio? Oh, yes. Well, well, I'm going to be playing Wheel of Truth with Ronnie from Heat Rash. Ooh. Yes, but that way. Um, yes, he's going to be teaching me choreography, and I'll be teaching him foreign policy. Mm. And of course, you can decorate them however you want. Perhaps you're a bit, I don't know, nostalgic for the. Old yeah, I want to know what he's drinking too. The studio down there, or even a bit of retro red. <laughs> I've got Sheila Quickstep being interviewed there by. Oh, um. Sorry, that's that's not supposed to be. That. Oh, mama, that is crazy. Oh, bloody hell, this is cool. Time for a break. When we come back, I'll be on the couch of chat talking to some of you, and I just cannot wait. We'll be back after these messages. And we're out. Why do we bother, Alex? What's the point? It's not like this is even close to journalism anymore. How did I let it get this far? So was that Alan James in the studio? In the should we be worried? We've got the Prime Minister here. It's good that she's here. She's the reason for the extra security. Are we going to need it? Possibly. We're back. It's not very reassuring. I know. Good thing I'm not your mum, right? Who saw an unbelievable 191 births today? Though a nasty cold snap brings bitter winds overnight. So not all sunshine and rainbows. No rainbows in the territories three and Jeremy. Oh, okay. Storm warning means we advise our residents to spend their leaders weekend indoors. Though we're sure the happy parents of the twelve new children. That makes sense. I like I couldn't make out who she flipped around. Though of course nothing to do with stars. More of a hot air, cold air thing. Next, this front of warm smiles. Both at the same time, Colin. That is not a thing. Surely there'll be some. Couture doesn't run to my family. Sprongs are huge in the circuses of the scenery. And brothels. Crazy. Everybody okay in here? Crikey. Yeah, we would be if you stopped asking us questions like that. We're expecting troublemakers, but nothing serious. You might hear some noises, but it's nothing to be concerned about. The services know what they're doing. So, nobody freak out with the shooting stats, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go on and all that. Tits and teeth. 
Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Tits and teeth, armed and ready. <laughs> you and your one bra. <laughs> yes. In five, four, three. Welcome back to the nightly show where it's time for the Prime Minister to face the toughest critics in the territories. You lot out there. <laughs> Call us on the usual numbers with your questions for the Prime Minister. First up, we have Humphrey from Hamble Bamblebury. <laughs> Lovely place. I'm hoping to retire there. Oh, good choice. <laughs> Are you there, Humphrey? Are you there, Humphrey? Hello, Humphrey. <laughs> We appear to have lost Humphrey. <laughs> we'll try and get him back, but let's go to another call in the meantime. Who have we got next, Patrick? Next up, we've got Mandy from Arsminster. Oh, I don't think I'll be retiring there. <laughs> Am I supposed to be doing something here? Hi, Mandy. You're through to the Prime Minister. What's your question? Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Mandy? <laughs> Mandy? <laughs> What's going on, Jenny? You try not to talk to the crew. Jenny. The lines are down. Oh, well, pull down to maintenance and get me. We can't. All the lines are down. Well, apologies to our viewers at home. We seem to have a few technical gremlins making mischief behind the scenes. <laughs> so while we're getting back up and running, uh, Patrick has a couple of questions that were sent in by our viewers earlier this week. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, of course I do. <laughs> Uh, well, our first question uh -huh. is from Patricia, who lives on Camera Avenue, uh, and what she really wants to know... Lock the door! What? Lock the fucking door! Yeah. Do the CCO, the oh the door. shit! You, you're Jenny, aren't you? Come here. You, Jenny, Don't be afraid, Jenny. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt anyone if we don't have to. All I want you to do is to keep the show on the air. Do you understand? Just do your job and everything will be alright, okay? Don't be afraid, Jenny. Don't be afraid, Jenny. You two, on your knees over there. You two, Move! On your knees over there. Move! So, this is the famous couch of chat, eh? This is the I don't Good. answer questions at gunpoint, Mr. James. Oh. You're not at gunpoint, Prime Minister. They are. Oh, 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 please don't kill me, please. <laughs> Nevertheless, if you think I'm going to answer to you, then oh, I'm afraid Oh, you don't to have to answer to me, Julia. <laughs> are the doors locked and sealed? Yes, sir. No one's getting in or out. Good. Good. All clear. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Yeah, Jeremy. 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 Welcome back, my bud. Hello, you. <laughs> Why didn't you make contact? We've only put you in their crosshairs, I'm sorry. Rotten, selfish bastard. Yes. Keep the show going. Cool. Yeah! Let them go, Alan. There'll be no killing tonight. There'll be no killing tonight. Hello. Sorry, I don't think we've met. I I'm Patrick Bannon. Is that what you're telling yourself, is it? <laughs> Sorry for barging in. Hate what you've done with the place. <laughs> Would you like your spot? It's yours now. You wear it well. So, let's talk, shall we? Armed security are on their way, Mr. Donaldson. I know you know that. Oh, well, let's make use of the time we have, then, eh? Well, I'll leave you to it, then. No. I think you should stay, too. For safety? For balance. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Let's welcome back the National Nightly News. Tonight I'm joined by probably the two most influential people in the country, 
if not the continent. So let's see if we can't kick over a few rocks and see what's lurking underneath. Prime Minister, if I could turn to you first. I have nothing to hide. Except that which is already hidden. Prime Minister, what is not Ethendrone? Prime Minister, what is not Ethendrone? I beg your pardon? Not Ethendrone. It's used in birth control, among other things. If you haven't heard of that, perhaps you could enlighten us in regards to Acrobacterium tumefaciens. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Donaldson. Well, that suggests a lack of attention to detail, Prime Minister. It's a bacterium used in the genetic modification of an organism. And I found traces of both these substances in every single one of the menu center food boxes that I've had analyzed from across the territories, if you want. What exactly are you suggesting? That you're purposely sterilizing this, the country? Just pointing out the facts. Oh my god. Is she purposely sterilizing the so country? Kate and I can't have. So you blamed it on the radioactive clouds from your bombs? Before Stacy, we tried so many times. So many times. Prime Minister, is there something wrong with the food? You want the truth? You think it'll help your viewers sleep at night? Well, well, here it is. Six years ago, when we came to power, we had access to the real facts and figures. And they told us we were doomed. The population was expanding at an unsustainable rate. Within 50 years, we would be out of natural resources. We would war over fuel, and then inevitably food and clean water. It was no exaggeration to say that, that we were facing extinction. We were facing extinction. It was supposed to be opt out contraception, a, an end to unwanted children, a chance to rebalance. But, but something went wrong in the testing phase. Nature took over. We never, I, I never wanted this. So you covered it up and blame the sterility on the bombs. Oh, please don't lecture me on morality, Mr. James. Your hands are far too dirty for that. Disrupt only did what had to be done. <laughs> Disrupt are not the answer. You'll just take us to an even more extreme version of where we were before. Your, your miserable policies will kill us all. I'm not the one who built the transition centers. No, you're from a time where people didn't even have the basic right to, to choose how and when to die. You turned children against their parents. We enabled young people to speak up about the abuse that they were facing. And guess what? Most of that abuse came from within in their own families. Identity cards. Oh, grow up. Sterilized us against our will. I built a sustainable future. It's too much. That's not for you to choose. That's not for you to choose. Well, if not me, then, then who? Who would choose it for themselves? It isn't the heart of all this. You don't trust us to choose. You think you know best. You know what's good for us, and if we disagree with you, then you'll send us to betterment. That's why there's no news anymore, because there's no choice, so there's no point. There should be elections. Elections have been suspended. Time to unsuspend them, then. If you want to carry on, you'll need a mandate. We have people ready to stand against you in every territory. So, let's turn to you, Mr. James. Yes. I want to assure the public that though disrupt are occasionally forced to violent means, we are not by nature a violent organization. Jenny! Yes, Jeremy? Could you have this queued up for us, please? Yes, Jeremy. It'd be a pleasure. I'm not censoring any of this. In a way, Mr. James, before you launch into a rather premature election campaign, I think it'd be useful for the viewers at home if you were to also answer a question or two. Of course. When we come to power, one of the first things we'll do is restore a free press. The truth is very important. No more hidden secrets. If you say so. From whom do you take your orders, by the way? From whom do you take your orders? I beg your pardon? Well, you're disrupt spokesman. But for whom do you speak? You know I can't tell you. It's too dangerous for me to say. It's too dangerous for me to say. I don't share those concerns. You see, I've met with them almost five years ago now. Back when I was a news anchor. I also met with them a week ago to discuss tonight's activity. I think they wanted to check that I've stick to the script, which really shows how little they know me. So this time, I wore a hidden camera. Would you like to see a little of what we discussed? No, you can't. 
She'll have them arrested. They'll be dead by morning. Not an unfair assessment. Fortunately, it's an off me. It's up to Alex in the broadcast room. Let's go. What screen, Jenny? Screen four. What screen? No, you can't. My people will stop you. Cut the power to your machines. Well, I would imagine mine will be doing their level best to ensure that Mr. Donaldson's footage gets the airing it deserves. After all, my security forces will be here soon, and I imagine this will end very badly for all of you. I'm on Jeremy's side here. Thank you, Jenny. Alex, showing this will have consequences. For someone watching, it's up to you. Alex, you got us this far. Please don't fall at the last hurdle. Oh damn! Glad I'm not making this choice. Fuck off, Bozeman. All the years of disrupting. You could make it all for nothing. Please, don't play that footage. And you're absolutely certain in your research. It's unpalatable but true. Advance are covertly sterilizing the population. Why don't you just release this through your normal channels? Little James, he is surprisingly efficient rabble rouser. The peasants respond to his more earthly qualities. But you, Mr. Donaldson, are a face they trust. We did not risk our operator's life to rescue you out of outrage. And afterwards? Once all this is out in the open? We anticipate considerable unrest, possibly riots. Followed, of course, in the restoration of democratic elections. It's literally all of the other country's leaders. You, Mr. Donaldson, will create that. And we should be there to fill it. That will take considerable resources. From what I understand, Advance took your wealth. The visible billions, yes. Some markets still prosper. There will always be addicts. And those with carnal desires for livestock of all ages. A lucrative business indeed. And then there are the foreign powers outside the territories. Those who fear to follow the fate of my glorious Erkistan. Yeah, there is no winner here. There's no good side. There's no bad side. It's all shit. This is why I'm with Jeremy here. No concern about that. I will do what Jeremy asks. To fight and to win. And once fight is done to make sure this aberrance is never seen again. A return to the natural order of things. The wheat rises to the top and the chaff is burned away. No more living side by side with ill-educated savages. Yeah, they all suck. They're all terrible beings. Yeah, yeah. Strict order. Yeah. one got relaxed. Everyone back in their place. Including our Mr. James. It amazes me how he cannot hear the Damoclean sword of the dangle above his head. <laughs> well, he's an ignorant fool. He sees only the red cape in front of him. Never the red blade. And so it is with the low orders. They are lost in this new world. They will gladly walk back to old one. And they will be ours again. As it should be. Excellent. Excellent. You set me up. No, Alan, you did that to yourself. Now do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand why we have to? Oh, pathetic. Neither of you recognises your own reflection. Thank you. How long, Jenny? For long, I imagine. For any of you. Security are outside. They've been here for five minutes, but they're not doing anything. Turns out there's a lot of them who wanted children. We're already a few minutes over, Megan, but with ratings like this, Bozeman's no fool. Do you want to take us out? It should be you. It should be both of us. You start. Before we go tonight, one final thought. There's so much to digest here. What's happened tonight in this political circus? The tent is collapsing, and the ringmasters have lost their glitter. There will be elections soon, I'd imagine. You'll be able to choose. These two will run. A choice between a shit sandwich and a cold cup of tea. A surface of what? Two extremes, both offering their own form of misery. You can just advance and be equal. In cages, like performing lions. Or disrupt and be free. To struggle and starve. Mm. Or you can do something different. You can run. You can stand. You can stop remembering the way things are and change it. You're good people and you are sensible people. You know the difference between right and wrong. So stop whinging and do something. Take responsibility, because if you don't, it'll all be left to these clowns. And that's the worst circus of all. 
My name's Jeremy Dawes, and I'm Megan Wolf. Have a transformative night, and then make tomorrow better. And we're out. We're done. <laughs> this program, this channel, no, all the Julia, people. not them. We're done. They got us both. Your security team say they'll escort you when you're ready. We can call you a taxi, Alan. Where would I go? Wherever you want. Am I under arrest? I think you know you've made that impossible, Mr. Donaldson. Yeah! My bosses won't be pleased with you. Child sex traffickers and wannabe dictators. They're the natural enemies of the reporter. We should go and see Bozeman. We'll do it together. Yes. And then we'll burn this set. That little scene. <laughs> <laughs> that last one was really funny. Hey, COVID officer. You're welcome, Pleasure Corp. Telephone cast. Was there a telephone? I think there's one more bonus broadcast plan. I think you have a little bit of time. Oh, okay.
<laughs> oh, I forgot about Bamley. Good evening. I'm Jer I'm Jeremy Dalton, and I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. The votes are in, and it's a decisive win for a court. The new centralist party snatched victory from under the noses of the mainstream parties. Incoming Prime Minister Fatima Chowdhury called Accord's win proof that the major parties had lost the trust of the nation and signalled the end of extremist politics. Neither advance nor disrupt, who failed to garner even 10% of the vote between them, have released a statement. Later, we'll be looking in detail at the election results across the nation before Jeremy brings us a report on the recent unrest in Valdez. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Wow. Julia's judgment all fall down. Jeremy's injustice, changing of the guard. A brighter future, wacky fun, middle ground, chaos reigns, under new management, renewed mandate, new week, a better Jeremy, inevitable advancement. Well, Snuggle fucked. Huh. Well, that's a very blunt question. <gasps> is it new puppy? Is it new puppy plan? Friends and neighbors. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do, um, I might wait to do the telethon on another day. Should I, should I do the telethon? Or should I do, should I wait for it another day? Slaves were just in pretty occasions. Fucking oh, negative. <laughs> we're only getting started. Good evening. I'm Megan Wait. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines mm. tonight. Studying, starting! Do it another day? Okay. So we definitely will be playing this game again. 100%. We're gonna get all those other endings at some point. Or we're gonna at least try to. Well, that's a very but.
Yeah, but I don't know where the branching takes place, is the thing. Like, I, I saw that you could... I saw that you could join at any point, but I didn't see... I haven't checked out that song yet. I will when I'm done streaming. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. I liked that ending, though. Nope. We're doing it later. I plan, you know for a fact, I'm going to get copyright striked the moment I play it on stream. I can't play it. You know how Eurovision likes to copyright everything. See? Yeah, exactly. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, no, I might... I might... I might do an advance run where I'm in favor of advance. I might do a... Hmm... Yeah, I would imagine that's the good ending. There's even better ones? Oh, shit. I was expecting that was, like, the good ending, where everything is neutral, someone else. Like, that's the... the because it was in the center, it made me feel like an accord means... It is definitely one of the good endings. Okay, thank God. I'm like, that's a good ending, right? I got a good ending, right? Not a shitty ending. Not a, you fucked up. Life is over. Yeah, I might do a disrupt run. I might do a neutral run. I might do an advance run. Um, the good ending is one where they don't lose the rodent. I think that one's unavoidable. <sighs> I'm debating on food. The the hamster. The hamster. And the game is meaningless. And the game is meaningless. It's awful. I want to turn on some music for a little bit. We'll just sit and chat for a little bit. Yeah, that's what I assumed. It seems like there are, it's like it. <coughs> it seemed like based off of the ending or based off of the titles of the endings that there is a. I, as much as I want pad thai, you know I can't come over right now. All 14 endings are canon? Damn. 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 Yeah, it seems like all the endings based off the titles are a spectrum of disrupt winning, into the center, and then advance winning. the sterility part of the game though. I was like, why are we talking about kids? What why why are we talking about kids? I was like we were getting a little bit handmaid's tale there for a second and I'm like It's my body, I could do what I want. It's my body and I'll do what I want to. Oh, Pad Thai sounds really good, though. More like Children of Meh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oof. 
Oof. Oof. Egg. Oof. <laughs> was that joke a f French egg? Because it was oof. <laughs> We have seal and egg experts. Do tell. Do tell. I'm fine, don't worry. It's okay. I appreciate your concern, but don't worry, I'm fine. Yes! I saw that. I will now pick it up now that I know how good- how, like, great the soundtrack is. Take a look at the trailer. OBS, why are you doing this? It was in the 1950s. Well, now you can recapture that community feeling as Channel One, in association with Not Games and Remington's Fist, bring you the Not For Broadcast ever expanding original soundtrack recording album. Available on both gramophone record and high quality audio cassette, no. this treasure trove of inappropriate goodness. Sorry, let me fix that. Y'all need to stop yelling at me. I love you all, but dang. From the beginning. Oh god, what have I done? When was the last time your family had a good wholesome sing-along? Haha, <laughs> that's right, it was in the 1950s. Well, now you can recapture that community feeling as Channel One, in association with Not Games and Remington's Fist, bring you the Not For Broadcast ever-expanding original soundtrack recording album. Available on both gramophone record and high-quality audio cassette, this treasure trove of inappropriate goodness features all your favorite tunes. Hey, listen up, I won't take no crap. Who said middle-class girls can't rap? I ain't afraid of your cool, cool naps. I'm a mother-loving rebel, but I still love Max. Learn about the brutal terrors of the school lunchroom in this searing theatrical expose. Look back longingly on the programs you've loved. When you're feeling all so sad, you just can't work things out. I've got just the job. Oh yeah. When there's two I never saw this one. A little tiny spout. I've got just the job. Teach your children about the inevitable disappointment of adulthood. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Or just 
Hang on. I didn't get that bit when I played. Oh, I did. How the devil do you get Megan to sing? You like to think you got the family rule The feelings are cool There's three versions of Mr. Bear? You think you're even-handed But there's nobody through The crew of your daughter Mom Fired one low price today And over the coming weeks I definitely months, got we'll that. Send you love your daughter more We'll send you collection of songs, instrumentals And any other old tosh I find lying around You know what I always say Chuck it on the OST and hope for the best. The I can't remember which version. Never expanding yeah, original soundtrack recording album. Because music is the food of love, and Bozeman is feeling romantic. And Bozeman is feeling romantic. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? What does what mean? All right, plan, are you ready? Plan. Plan. Hey, plan. Hey, plan. Why am I muted? Am I muted? No, I'm not muted. I was looking at my audio output and not my input. Hey, plan. I'm gonna put the music back on. The name of this song is Carne Asadud. What the fuck is that title? Carne Asadud? Mr. Bear, what's that over there? I'm gonna have that stuck in my head constantly. That song was a bit of a bop, I'm not gonna lie. And y'all can fight me on it. Music is the food of love, and Bozeman is feeling romantic. I'm waiting to hear from Plan. Plan, hurry up! No, I've never been. I want to, but, um, money <laughs> is expensive. Is expensive! But I wanted to go. I wanted to. I want to travel different places. In that case... What the fuck are these towns?! Pimp and Buggy? Mount Unapproachable? Prickly Bottom Beach? What the f- Knock Up Creek? What is wrong with- I- well it wasn't there last year, Cave? Who'da 
Bonnet Hill? Who fucking comes up with these dumbass names? Oh, ready? 